Hello, Algebra 1 students. Today I'm going to do Chapter 5, Lesson 3, which is Solving Systems of Linear Equations. This time we're going to use the elimination method. Please turn to page 144 of your journals. A coefficient is the constant before the variable. For example, if I had 4x squared, then the 4 is the coefficient. When you are solving a system of linear equations by elimination, you need to follow these steps. Step one is to multiply, if necessary, one or both equations by a constant so that at least one of the pair of like terms has the same or opposite coefficients. Step two, add or subtract the two equations, and your goal is to eliminate one of the variables. Step three is to solve for the other variable. And step four is to substitute the value that you got in step three into one of the original equations, it doesn't matter which one, and solve for the other variable. In exercises one through 18, solve the system of linear equations by elimination and check your solution. So when we solve by elimination, we first need to see if one of the variables or one of the, yeah, one of the variables is gonna disappear if we add or subtract the equations together. I notice that we have x minus x, would, which would cancel out if we added these two equations together. So I'm gonna add them. The x's cancel and we're left with three y plus two y is five y and 17 plus eight is 25. So now if I divide out my five, I get y is equal to five. So I know that part of my answer is y equaling five. So I can write my point with y as the five. Now I need to find out what x is. And so remember, I take my y is 5 and I plug it into either of the two equations. I'm going to do the top equation because that one looks a little easier since it's got a positive x on it. So we have x plus 3 multiplied by y, which is 5, equals 17. And we need to solve for x. So we're going to subtract 15 off of both sides and we get x is equal to 2. So that means 2 comma 5 is my answer. Now I plugged it into the top equation. I'm just going to double check my work by plugging it into the second equation. So my second equation is negative x, so that'd be negative 2, plus 2 times y, which is 5, equals 8. So it's negative 2 equal, sorry, plus 10 equals 8, and that does work. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 3. So if I add these two equations together, I notice that the 2x minus 2x will cancel out. And so that means that 3y minus, and there's an invisible 1 here, 3y minus 1y is 2y, and 10 minus 2 is 8. So now dividing by 2, I find out that y is equal to 4. So now I'm going to plug this back in. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the top equation again. So we have 2x plus 3 multiplied by y, and we got y is 4, equals 10. So I'm going to subtract 12 on both sides because that's what 3 times 4 is. So 2x is equal to negative 2. And when you divide out 2, we get x is equal to negative 1. So our answer is negative 1, comma, 4. OK, I plugged it into the top equation. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the second equation just to make sure that it's correct. So we have negative 2 multiplied by x is negative 1 minus y is 4 equals negative 2. So it's negative, so it's positive 2 plus minus 4 is equal to negative 2, and that does work. Okay, I would like for you to go ahead and try number 2 on your own. You'll notice that when you add these two equations together, the y's cancel out this time because negative y plus y is 0. So go ahead and finish number 2 on your own. Okay, number 2, I got an answer of 3 comma 1. Double check your work and see if you got that correct. Numbers 4, 5, and 6 are done the same way that we did numbers 1, 2, and 3. So go ahead and try numbers 4, 5, and 6 on your own. For number 4, I got 3 comma negative 2. For number 5, negative 4 comma negative 4. And number 6, negative 1 comma negative 2. If you got them incorrect, please pause the video and see if you can find your mistake. So let's take a look at number 7. What I notice in that number seven is that it is not lined up. So I have my X's lined up. My Y's are not in the right place. They need to be all lined up. And the constants are also in the wrong place. So I can either rearrange things or 
what I'm going to do instead on this one is because y is already by itself, then I'm going to go ahead and not solve this using elimination and solve it using substitution instead because that just makes more sense to me. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute in my y. And this, by the way, is what we learned in um, section 5.2. So this would be 2x plus y, which is 3x minus 18, is equal to 12. And then I'm just going to go ahead and solve for x. And I get x equals 6. Now I'm going to substitute that back in for the second equation. So I get 3 multiplied by 6 minus 18 is equal to y. So that's 18 minus 18, which is 0. So y is equal to 0. So my answer is 6 comma 0. So if this were a test or quiz, I would make sure to plug it into the top equation as well to make sure that that works. I'm going to go ahead and skip numbers 8 and 9. If you would like to try it on your own, the answer is 1 half comma 4 and 3 eighths comma 1 eighth, if you would like to try those two on your own. But just for the sake of expediency, I'm going to skip it for this video. So if I look at the next page, I notice that in this problem, the x's uh, can't be canceled out and the y's can also not be canceled out. So that means that I need to uh, multiply by something so that they are able to cancel out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2. And what's going to happen then is that that top equation, if I, I need to distribute, we need to make sure that we distribute in all the parts. So that would be 2x plus 4y is equal to 40. The second equation stays the same. We haven't done anything to that. So you'll notice that this time the x's are about ready to cancel out, except they are both pluses. So this time we need to subtract the whole equation from the top equation. So it'd be 2x minus 2x, which is 0. And then don't forget that you need to, when you're subtracting, you need to subtract that as well. And then you also need to subtract that one. So you need to distribute that subtraction sign. So 4y minus y is 3y. And then 40 minus 19 is 21. So when we divide by 3, we get y is equal to 7. So now I need to take this y is equal to 7 and plug it into one of my first two equations. I'm going to use the top one because x is close to being by itself on that one. So we have x plus 2 times y is 7 equals 20. So I'm going to subtract 14 on both sides. And 20 minus 14 is 6, so x is equal to 6. Okay, so then my answer is 6 comma Let's take a look at number 11. On number 11, I notice that the, the x's cannot cancel and the y's cannot cancel out either. So what I need to think about is if I changed my x's into a number, I would change it into 12. I would multiply everything by 4 to make that into a 12, multiply everything by 3 to make that into a 12. Alternatively, I could change my y's. So I would change this into a 6. So I would multiply everything by 3, multiply everything by 2. Uh, since 6 is smaller than 12, I'm going to do the 6 route. So I'm going to multiply everything on both equations. On the top equation, I'm going to multiply by 3. And remember, I need to make sure to multiply everything in that equation by 3 and multiply the bottom equation by 2. The most common mistake I see students make is that they forget to multiply everything in the equation. So the top equation will be 9x minus 6y is equal to negative 6. And the bottom equation will be 8x minus 6y is equal to negative 8. So you'll notice that we have uh, our x, or sorry, our y's are exactly the same. So we're going to subtract them again. Sometimes it's helpful to pull your subtraction, subtraction sign through. So I'm just going to put a minus here. I'm going to change this to a plus, change that to a plus. And that's sometimes useful because then you uh, hopefully will remember that um, to pull that subtraction sign all the way through. So we have x is equal to 2 left over. So we, knew that, we know that 2 is our x number. So now I need to take this 2 and plug it into one of these two top equations. Uh, they both look about the same amount of difficulty, so I'm going to go ahead and use the top one. So I have 3 times 2 minus 2y is equal to negative 2. So I'm going to subtract 6 on both sides 
and I get negative 2y is equal to negative 8. So that means y is equal to 4. So my final answer, x is 2, y is 4. All right, let's go ahead and do number 14. So if I look at number 14, my x's I would change into a 12, my y's I would change into a 15. Since 12 is less than 15, I'm going to go that route. I'm going to change my x's. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 4 and the bottom equation by 3. And I get negative 12x minus 20y is equal to negative 28. And the bottom equation is negative 12x minus 9y is equal to negative 6. Once again, I'm going to subtract these two equations. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that negative through now so that I can make sure that I don't make a mistake later. The x's cancel out. 20 minus 9 is 11, so this is negative 11y, and that is equal to negative 22. So dividing by negative 11, I get y is equal to positive 2. Okay, let's go ahead and plug it back in. Let's see, I'm going to plug it into the bottom equation this time because the numbers are slightly smaller. So we have negative 4x minus 3 multiplied by 2 equals negative 2. And uh, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So we have negative 4x is equal to positive 4, so that means x is equal to negative 1. So my final answer is negative 1, comma 2. All right, I would like for you to please do numbers 12, 13, and 15 on your own. For number 12, I got 1 comma 1 half. For number 13, 3 comma 3. And for number 15, 1 comma 1. Please pause the video and check and see if you have any mistakes and see if you can find them. We're going to skip to number 19. So on number 19, it says the sum of two numbers is 22 and the difference is 6. So what are the two numbers? So if we think about it, the sum means the answer to an addition problem. And we have two numbers. I'm just going to call those x and y right now because those we don't know what they are yet. Is, and that's my equal sign, 22. So we're going to add together x and y, and that's going to equal 22. The second equation is says that the difference, that's the addition, that, that's the answer to a subtraction problem, is, is my equal sign 6. So x minus y is equal to 6. Okay, so now I just need to uh, solve this problem. Elimination is the easiest way. And I notice that the y's already cancel out because it's positive y and negative y. So that means I'm going to add my two equations together. x plus x is 2x and 22 plus 6 is 28. So that means that x is equal to 28 divided by 2, which is 14. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug this up into the top equation here. So we have 14 plus y is equal to 22. If I subtract 14 on both sides, I get y is equal to 8. So my answer is not a point this time. We're just trying to find out what the two numbers are. The two numbers are 14 and 8. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.